skills of our forefathers, the timber cutter, the woodman, the man who looked after and harvested the trees before we had modern day harvesting machinery, before we had the hydraulic lifts and all things like that. And But not to say that they don't serve their purpose today because I mean the machines, the, high, the processors and the uh, harvesters that we have, they're wonderful machines. And who'd have thought it 30, 40 years ago that you get a machine that will go into a wood, cut a tree down, <coughs> sled it down, sled it, sled it up, convert it into uh, saw logs or timber, and uh, all in about 30 seconds. And uh, when I was um, uh, timber harvesting in the wood to cut down a 100 foot, 80 foot, 100 foot tree, Douglas fir, coarse pine, call it what you like, um, it used to take me 15, 20 minutes to sled it out and fell it, sled it out and uh, stack it up. And now these machines come along and do it in 30 seconds. Well, there you are, that's progress. But anyway, what our aim is, is to perpetuate, is to go back and is to do the job the way they used to do it before we had processors and such like. When I say the timber cutter to used to look after the trees as well as harvest them, because not only did he cut them down, he used to grow them, he used to nurture them, he used to bring them on, plant them. So we have that thing called sustainable woodlands, sustainable timber for the future. And uh, all the timber you see here today uh, is all been felled to a proper felling program. We just don't go in the wood, cut down trees at random. It's all felled to a proper program. And when I harvested this timber, oh, well, yeah, about last year now, all the, uh, all the butt lakes went as timber into the timber industry. And uh, we buy what we call the second length, which lends itself well to what we do. Um, otherwise, what it does, it goes into, all, well, it goes into this chip wood now. Also goes into this biomass uh, where it's uh, all chipped up and it goes out as heating fuel like that. So uh, our main aim here is to, is to uh, well it's timber sports really, it's the uh, competition piece that comes out of our woods and forests and uh, all the disciplines that we do depicts all what the timber cutter would do in his everyday work, i.e. like Rory down there, say hello Rory, this is Rory Trim, comes from Beer Regis in Dorset, bends bananas for a living. Um, amongst other things. Now he sort of gets a standing block. Well, that's made to represent the felling of a standing tree. And uh, this is a sort of competition piece that's come down from that. So I'll start Rory off working and tell you a bit more about what he does as he progresses through the log. So Rory, if you're ready, start you in a normal way. Axman, stand to your logs. Go one, two, three. And uh, he just doesn't hit the logs square in that's the strongest part of the tree, that's where the tree is expecting to be hit. It works on a 40, 45 degree angle and uh, works round in a circular pattern. <coughs> and he takes out a scarf to stay at the same length as the diameter of the log. So if you've got a 12 inch log, you take out a 12 inch scarf. Simple as that. And uh, uh, he works it up in a place that starts off marking it up in a place that's comfortable to him and then he works out his measurements from there and then he, when he goes around the back he marks the log up a little bit higher so coming when he's driving the log off he's driving into what we call clean wood now although this is a demonstration of what we do here uh, just to show you the way it's done how it's all worked out but when we're doing this in competition if you get the thing called Woody, then it can cost you hits, it can cost you time, and the last chance of you winning the race, which is what we'll show you a bit more later on. Uh, and there you are. And there you are, that's just to get Rory limbered up, trained, fine athlete that he is. Yeah, physique, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then my Rory, you keep at it, mate, you'll be right. <laughs> right, now. You've got your tree felled. Now you've got to convert it into length. Convert it into length for the sawmiller. The sawmiller, he was the most important man in the wood. 
he was by, one buying the timber from you. He was the one paying the money. <coughs> Not only was he paying your wages, he was probably paying for the replantation, planting of the plantation as well. So, uh, so the, and he would give you a spec, a specification as to what length he wanted you to cut the timber. <coughs> so when he took it into his sawmill, he uh, he could have it actually manage it, and it was there ready for what orders he had coming into his sawmill. So this is Johnny. Say hello, Johnny. Johnny Bowerman. Uh, now Johnny's been on. He hasn't been here for the last couple of days. He's been on harvesting. He drives the combine in the and on one of the farms around here, and he does got a lot of tractor driving as well. So he's. This is his first day here with us today. He's been allowed out. He's, I think they just finished harvesting, or finished uh, doing the combining anyway. <coughs> so, and it's good to see him here from today and tomorrow. He's only been chopping since last Christmas, but uh, so we're going to start him off working. So Johnny, if when you're ready, uh, I'll start him off working. This is what we call the underhand. So Johnny, if you're ready, stand to your logs. Go one, two, three. Same again, 40, 45 degree angle. Now this is this is a little bit easier to learn. The standing block where you've got to work across the, across the line of your body. It's all hand-eye coordination. With the underhand, you can line everything up down the central line of your body. You can line the lines up on your lock, on your angles, turn your feet, and then you can get everything in line, including the axe, and it's a little bit that you can get far more accuracy with it like that. Whereas even on the standing blocks, you've got to work across your body and you've got to have more axe control. So when we're teaching the young axemen, if this is the easiest way that we can do it. Uh, puts his driving blows in, one in the top, one in the bottom, right in the bottom, and there you are, he turns on his log, works like the standing block, works a long bit further along his log, so he doesn't get woody when he comes to drive the log off. Because what you remember is, like the standing block, this is all done, can all, it's all usually what we do it in, it's all done in the race. And one of the reasons why, another reason why they used to do, uh, used to even chop the butts and the, the, sever the logs into the length with an axe. Come sometimes they were sprung, that when the tree was felled, it goes down between two other trees, and it's on a, it's, it's a bit sort of sprung. Uh, it was easier to chop it off, so you relieve the spring spring out of the tree. Otherwise, you could split the butt, and woe betide you in the wood if you ever split the butt, because uh, then the sawmiller couldn't use it. But there, there you are. So they used to bed them out with an axe sometimes because it's easier. Well, thank you very much, Johnny. Very good demonstration there. Um, especially as a young man who's uh, only been chopping about since last Christmas time. So there you are. So you got your tree felled, you got it cut into length. Now you had to get above the, some, some of the work you had to do. You had to get above the buttress of the tree part of the tree that was no use to the sawmiller. You had to sometimes, you had to work 15, 20 foot off the ground. Sometimes the trees were fluted, they were fire damaged, they were hollow in the bottom, they were no use to the sawmiller. He wouldn't pay you for timber that he couldn't use. Um, everything you've done in the wood was all paid on results. You never got paid. You could walk around the wood in your hands and your pockets and you wouldn't be paid a thing. But you had, to, you had to do, you had to do, you had to work. But anyway, then this is the method that they got, they used to get above this problem. So this is Tom, say hello Tom. Hello Tom. Works in the construction industry. And uh, I'm going to start him off working, and I'll tell you a bit more about what he does as he progresses up the tree. So Tom, if you're ready, Axman, stand to your logs, go one, two, three. Now we've already put the pockets in this tree so we can use the tree for the whole five days that we're here. Saves us bringing another tree in every day. 
and in the pocket you want a 30 degree angle on the top and then flat on the bottom so when you put the spear of the board in it's uh, got a steel toe clip on the end of the board that actually grips into the grain of the wood and then the weight of you stood on the log on the on the board actually holds you into the onto the board now the block on the top same as what you cut the standing block on the ground that 40 45 degree angle again most efficient way of getting through the log log <coughs> works round, circular pattern, clears his wood, front, both sides. If you don't have your axe uh, hanging out either side, the chip will not come through. <coughs> in other words, it will just hang in there and hang in there all the time. So it works round, circular pattern. Now, now what he's going to do, I think he's going to turn around on this log, which is the north of, this is the North American method of chopping. They do this in the Southern Hemisphere. They do more. They come down the, the in the competitions. They come down the tree and then go around, and go up the other side. But the ruling is, is that you've got to take a chip out. But anyway, so we're we're a demonstration, demonstrating, and we just basically he's taking the chip out anyway. So he's not going to get disqualified. Uh, you're all right there. Yeah. So anyway, so there you are. You got your tree felled. You got it converted into length. You got above the buttress of the tree. And now the other tools that well, the timber cutter he didn't have many tools. He uh, had an axe and a few wedges. He also had a thing called a crosscut saw. Now this saw that Matt's bringing round to you at the moment is probably the uh, well. It's one of the most uh, sort of advanced sort of sores, competition sores that you can buy in the world today. But it's based on a very old tooth pattern. Tooth pattern was sort of invented 1700s, something like that. And it, the tooth pattern was as revolutionary in its day as what our chainsaws were and now our modern day harvesters. Before that, they had the problem that he couldn't get sawdust out of the cup. Your normal peg tooth saw, like your uh, tenon saw, your panel saw that's in your shed. If it's in a saw that's six foot long, seven foot long sometimes, and you're trying to saw a tree off that was three, three foot, six, four foot across, the sawdust used to get stuck in the cup and uh, used to jam the saw up. And the only way you could get it out was by actually, actually uh, drawing the saw out of the wood and then releasing as much sawdust as you can and then putting it back in. Well, this tooth pattern had a four, three or four teeth that scribed the wood and then a raker tooth, which is a single tooth on its own, that actually raked the sawdust out of the cup. Now, <coughs> um, so it meant that you could keep cutting, you didn't have to stop, uh, because stopping you weren't producing any, any timber and it was laborious, so it meant that you could just keep cutting with it. But, <coughs> but there, the man by the name of Lance, he called it the Lance Tooth Perforated. He couldn't get it developed over here, so he went over to America uh, with his tooth pattern, met up with a man by the name of Henry Diston, and uh, he saw the potential of this saw tooth pattern and uh, uh, developed it. And that's how you ended up with Henry Distant Saws that now are sold, or then, were sold all over the world. But, <coughs> now, Matt here, say hello Matt, Matt Kate, and this is Matt's wife. They're going to, they're going to, hello, they're going to sort of, just take a disc off. <coughs> and, uh, and you'll see how this saw does actually cut. And you'll see that it doesn't draw out a sawdust, it draws out a straw, and uh, that's the, the straw is that this, that's the raker tooth actually doing its job like a little plow. So there you are, and uh, and that's how well how efficient that, that saw does cut. Now that saw was developed. Uh, well, it's only been developed in the last 20, 25 years, 
Ah, Steph. I'm sorry, Steph. I forgot your name just a minute ago. <laughs> I'm dreadfully sorry. Uh, I shall have to buy her a drink later, so that's me and the doggos for the day. So there you are. <laughs> now, we have another saw, another tooth pattern, which is an end tooth. Now, where the peg and raker was developed and into saw racing saw, this is all the um, saw, tooth pattern, that was made or developed on a computer for competition sawing. It's called an end tooth gets its name from the shape of the teeth and that's basically it and uh, all that actually draws the sawdust out of the cut is the shape of the actual angle that's on the, on the tooth and you pull in the saw through the through, through the log now uh, we just see now this is uh, Mark say hello Mark Mark Googler <coughs> now they just draw a disc off there <coughs> okay, right, there you go. And you know, you'll see that this saw does actually cut, it cuts inch, inch and a half every time you pull the saw through the wood. And uh, <coughs> it was specifically made for saw racing. No other no other use, it wasn't made to go the it wasn't made to work in the woods at all. And there you are. <coughs> so there you are. So, uh, is anybody in Foresters out there want to come and have a go with this saw? It's a saw, and, you know, is there, you'll, you'll see, that anybody want to come and have a go? There's got to be one out here. Uh, now you'll see, you'll see how the saw actually does cut. It actually, the secret is, is you've got to get the saw to actually want to cut the wood. <coughs> that's the secret of all sort of like the saws and the axes to actually get the saw or on the axe to actually draw the wood. Uh, uh, put your left hand on the top, right hand on the bottom, pull the saw, don't push, keep the saw level between your partner, don't pull it into your body and basically let the saw do the work. Don't snatch it, don't try and go too fast with it, let the saw do the work and it will just drop inch, inch and a half, <coughs> virtually effortless. <coughs> yeah, don't rock it, don't dance on the end of the saw. You can just let the saw do the work. Keep the saw level on the wood. And it will do the work for you. Uh, well, there you are, very good gentlemen. Uh, very good. Thanks for coming out. Take on a frisbee if you want. Or a lumberjack frisbee anyway. There you are. Very good. Uh, <laughs> uh, anybody else want to have a go? There going to be any more budding foresters here? Right. No, no, no. Right. Okay, boys. Are you going to uh, go one one against the clock then? No? They're not going to do one against the clock? Hey? Oh right, they don't want to do one against the clock then. Oh right, okay. You going to do one against the clock, you two? Hey, anyway? Right, they're going to have a go against the clock. Matt don't want to do it. I don't know what I've got with Matt. He's done the song. Oh right, right. I, on my wrist, have a magic stopwatch. Uh, no, 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 no. Mine's magical. The, the magic stopwatch is better than a real one. Now, that log on the end there is 14 inches across. So they reckon cut an inch of timber per second with this saw when they're going for it. Uh, <coughs> so, so they've got to get that off in 14 seconds. So, right. And they're already halfway through the log. They're supposed to set the teeth in. Yeah, yeah, not halfway through the log, but still. Anyway, right. So you've got 14 seconds on my magic star. I start my magic stopwatch. 
and we're saying we get on. So right, Sawyers, are you ready? Go one, two, three. Basically, all swords, let the sword do the work. And you'll see how that saw actually does drop. There you are. That. Ah. Well, that's a very good time. That was ten minutes. <laughs> ten minutes. Now it was 7.30 seconds. So the only thing is, later on, you've got to beat that. <laughs> I like finding it funny, isn't you? There you are. Well, to give these boys a bit of a rest, um, before we go into the sort of a race, which is basically what we're chopping is all about, I've got to go out there now and uh, bring it back up to date with this noisy, horrible, noisy thing called a chainsaw. Oh, yes. So you'll have to bear with us for a minute, um, get one of them to come do a bit of commentating or something, and uh, I'll go out here with a chainsaw and we'll see what we can conjure up. Uh, all right? Well, thank you very much, Michael. Right then, Michael's a bit of a dab hand with a chainsaw. He regularly uh, carves and whittles some uh, really nice pieces. We'll have to see what he's got in store for us today. Just take a minute to thank our sponsor, which is Lovell and Barnes Limited and the Garage Conversion Specialists. So thank you to those two for their support.
Well, there we go, Michael. What have you whittled for us this lovely sunny morning? It's a chainsaw yeah. and earmuffs that. A chainsaw <laughs> and earmuffs that. You can have it that way. And be dead. And be dead. I don't think that that's really a chainsaw stand. No. I am not suitably impressed. I think that it's something a little bit more than you can on. There we go. A lovely little picture there. Well done, Michael. Thank you very much. No, I dare say you wouldn't fit on that. Yeah. So I've got to find someone who is more suited. No. Someone. Twenty-three, 
27, and now they're all the way. Uh, now you can see the clock's good. Uh, so there you are. Uh, uh, Johnny has decided to change axis. They've all turned by Johnny and Mark. Uh, don't know what they're doing down here, but still there you are. <laughs> but two up, John, Tom, and drive. <laughs> Max off. Rory's wish he never had that last point last night. Tom's off. Rory's off. And uh, I don't know what's up with Johnny. Uh, uh, there you are, he's going, he's going to funny car. <laughs> but there, he hasn't been chopping long. But we'll just, he'll just hang in there. Keeps his... Uh, Go and follow his line, <coughs> clear his wood, top and bottom, <coughs> work round, circular pattern, marks off. <coughs> uh, and you'll hear his log cracking, and there you are. Uh, there you are, very good. Right, well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed our show. Uh, I hope we've got the, it all across in a manner or a way that you can understand. And uh, we're on again at ten past one or quarter past one, somewhere around there. Uh, hang around, do your exercises, go and get yourself a cup of tea. Ten minutes time, uh, Trevor and the Sheep Show over there. You'll see so Trevor is just waving at me now. And uh, he'll be on in about ten minutes time. So go and do your exercises, get yourself a cup of tea and you'll enjoy the sheep show and uh, we'll see you later on. Thank you very much.